Hello and welcome to the Temple of Tomes with your host, Indie Comics Jones, live from Studio C. Today is January 18th, 2022. This is episode 462. Today we're looking at Panther. It's the new superheroine coming out from Dynamite. This is the first issue. Came in at a whopping $3.99. And of course, as it's Dynamite, you know they're going to have many, many variant covers. This one is the regular A cover, and it's got kind of a, a manga look to it. Uh, you know, usually they're pretty super sexy. There are some more sexier covers, and we'll take a look at those later. This is a not recommend. I'd only recommend it to, to people that collect this type of stuff. Um, number ones, and uh, maybe some of the other uh, sexier covers on here. This one no, it doesn't really work. The story, it was lacking. The dialogue was not real sharp, in my opinion. And some of the the narrative wording was a little clumsy. So that's why I'm giving this a not recommend. Let's take a look and see who worked on it. Okay, so we get a nice blur, which is cool. You know, it tells you about this main character. I'll go in there. You can kind of read that. And, and I had no problem with the, the underlying story. It seemed pretty solid. Okay, the writer on this, a couple writers, uh, Thomas Sinagowski, I hope I said that right, uh, Janine Atchison. Okay, our artist is Igor Lima, and he did a good job on this. Uh, Adriano Augusto was the colorist and then we have a number of other people here doing i guess lettering <laughs> desi siente we've seen her name before i think i've done one with taylor esposito and carlos s manguel uh the this cover is by judy long and let's take another look at the cover it's a, it's a nice cover i kid you not um but she's a you wouldn't really know it from here, but she's a very sexy creature in this. She has the ability. Well, I don't know if she actually has the ability or if she gets angered, she turns into this panther. She's cursed with this. So we get this start off. And two months prior to the present day, we've got this guy hijacking a plane. He's got some kind of egg in it. It's a radioactive womb, apparently, as we find out later. And he crashes the plane so this womb can feed on all the corpses, I, and including himself. Um, then we go back to now, and we get to see what's going on with Pantha, who uh, actually was a, a pharaoh from the east. And so you can kind of take a look. The art in it's pretty good. I, I was enjoying the art. The wording was a little clumsy at times. I struggled with that. Um, I'm trying to find one one here. They talk about uh, they captured the panther, captured her panther form, and they said it was surprisingly difficult to catch her. And I was just like, I would think a panther would always be difficult to catch. <laughs> I thought that was an odd comment, but it got a little bit other crazy little things like that further on. Now, so we get to see it. We get to see her in her human form. She's a, she's now an immortal. She was a, a pharaoh. We get the flashback. She could not bear a son to the pharaoh, so he hooked up with a commoner. She bore him a son. Uh, the, the, the queen got very, very jealous of this and was going to kill it, and, and the commoner caught wind of it and stole away with the baby okay let's take a quick break here dracolina coming out from christopher priest i i know he's a good writer i don't know how good this book is going to be it's one of the daughters of draculon and i don't think this is a new character but it's new for priest and you can see there's some very very sexy covers here she's got kind of that uh, vampirella type outfit on only in black not red and we get one cosplay one as well. 
So there you go. Yeah, that's like go. Okay, let's go back to our Pharaoh story. So she, the the commoner takes off with the baby boy. She's unable to find her. Um, even though she's been granted the um, ability by this this kind of cat queen, panther queen, who's a protectress of the pharaoh, who protects the pharaohs. So she has the ability to see through the eyes of all cats. But this doesn't even help her. She's unable, still unable to locate this commoner that has stole away with the heir to the crown. Now... Her her um, method to combat this is she has all the newborn males slayed. Um, whether or not the 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 uh, heir was slayed, we don't we never know. But the the goddess finds out about how she was lied to about the powers and everything. She was told she was going to protect the baby if she found it, and the baby had gone missing. But in an instance, she wanted it dead, and she's put the curse of wrath on this fair uh this queen and she has to relive the killing of all these thousands of newborn babies now there's another thing they call it the rage of babies now i don't know if babies can really rage i know they get uncomfortable and they can start crying a lot um, that was my experience i never thought of it as rage it was more just something was irritating them <laughs> they weren't really mad at anybody in particular, anything is just they were just upset. They weren't comfortable. Um, so we flash to Las Vegas, and we have this this older guy who turns out to be a god, and his time is up. And there was one one aspect of this book that I thought was kind of cool. They talk about the cycle of the gods. So when the gods are living amongst the humans, they've kind of wear out their cycle, and they have to be reborn again and start anew. And and they're all kind of prosper. They're all kind of high-end um, entrepreneurs, talent, or whatever. This god is a, is a god of joy and music. And he has a special key that only works in a special doorway. They don't say why the doorways are where they are, but this one apparently is in Vegas. And he's transported back to the original Panther Queen, who no longer has her, her wrath. And so she's accumulated all these other gods with them because this older gentleman, this one that's the god of music, is going to be reborn into something new, so they're kind of making a new thing about it. However, she mentions, i got to kind of hold up the ceremony because things have been going on. I sense things are not right within the world. And we find out why. We get a little more description of that radioactive womb that got all the uh, passengers to sustain it, to build it, to make it stronger, but it wasn't enough. So it created its own army of kind of prehistoric ant creatures to go out and find more subsistence for it. And it happens to be the Dunmore compound where they're all meeting right now. <laughs> And then we get a couple more. Let's take another station break because these are really nice. I, I thought these were, the art in here is really nice. Let's get in here and take a look. These are the Valentine issues of Red Sonia. Looking very, very sharp. And Chuck Brown is the writer on this one. This Valentine's Day special. And then we have Vampirella looking really absolutely stunning in this drawing here. There you go. And I don't see who's the writer on this one. So that's what's coming out in February for the the Valentine's Day issues. I don't know if there's going to be more than that. I'm sure there's going to be variant covers of these as well. Okay, let's move back to the, the story. Those, those ant creatures have infiltrated the Dunmore compound. We have our we have our leader, the Panther Queen, and the the other god that's the singer god. Those are the only two that have not been captured to be taken back for food. So the Panther goddess is going to try to stave them off while the other guy is going to take a car and try to escape and find who we know now as Panther. You can see. Uh, 
he has to kill a bug, run over a bug. He's a Mercedes man. Yeah, there's a, a few weird, oddly worded things in here. Uh, I think there was a, a couple typo because I used spell check instead of uh, a live editor. So the spelling was correct, but it was just the wrong word. Um, and he comes, he, he finds, somehow he knows where this is. Uh, they don't really kind of go into that too much. He knows where Pantha is. He's talking to her. And she changes back and she says she will not help them. She will not give up her wrath. Um, because she now feels the, the pain of all those babies that died. And she wants to live with that. And she needs to be uh, forgiven by the, by the goddess herself. Not some guy just saying, give me your wrath. So, un unfortunately for him, the monsters find him and attack him. She turns Pantha and it jumps out of the cage it's just got all this a very powerful panther kills this creature beast and then decides she will help him and that's the end of issue one so not i i can't really recommend it i didn't think it was good enough the art in it is good i i, I did like the art i did like a couple of the little aspects of the story such as the cycle of gods and they could have probably gone into it a little bit more but um other than that, I just it wasn't that compelling of a story. Um, she's cursed, uh, and uh, she's got this panther thing. It didn't come into why, when, and where, and why she can turn into a panther. It, it didn't go into that too much. It just make it sound like it happens every once in a while, a circumstance, and she's been caught and put in a zoo. And then, so, uh, well, now she's out. So the next one, next issue is called The Curse and Worse. Okay, so we get a little bit of storyline here about um, Christopher Priest writing on Draculina. We get uh, flashbacks to 1993 with the Mistress of the Dark, Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, the classic omnibus years. Um, I can't remember... If I, I, she was in the news lately, and I can't remember. I mean, I hope it wasn't that she, because she died. I can't. I just cannot remember why she was in the news lately. I know she's she has a girlfriend, the actual Cassandra Peterson. Then we have the an ad for Red Sonia Volume One, which I really don't care for the art on this. Um, Amanda Connor, and Jimmy Palamati, writing. The art there looks okay. Um, Vampirella versus Purgatory. That's a trade that's out now. And Purgatory just looks absolutely stunning here. Let's get in here to take a good look. They've been showing this same picture for quite a while. And here's our cover gallery for Pantha. And I'll get in here real close and you can take a look. Sorry, someone just started a weed whacker out there. Hopefully you can't hear it too well, but I can hear it loud and clear. <laughs> And it seems to get louder and louder. Actually, it's a wood chipper. Okay, so thank you, Mr. Wood Chipper. As you can see, there was one. I don't really see it here. Maybe I'm, I'm maybe it's the next page. There's some more. Yeah, there's a lot of covers for this since it's a number one, a new character. There's some under boob covers that look pretty good, and there they go. Let's get in here really close and take a better look at those. Whoops, getting a lot of focus there. Okay, and then finally this last row here. So there you have it, Panther number one. It's a not recommend. I thank you very much for stopping by and listening to me talk about this book on this review. As always, please like, please subscribe if you haven't, and please leave comments. We'll see you next time at the Temple of Tomes. This is Indie Comics Jones dodging the wood chipper. Bidding you adieu.